listen, uh, you know, everything is different because Jesus is alive. Yeah. Everything is different because he's alive. Because he's with us, our lives have changed. Uh, you know, our outlook changes, our experience changes, and it's not just a holiday that we commemorate. It, this is a reality that we live in, that Jesus is actually alive. Somebody say amen. amen. That I, we believe that we serve not just a savior, but a risen savior. Uh, not just a king, but a king who is alive. Not just a nice teacher, not just someone that came with great philosophy, but Jesus who not only paid a price for our sins, but rose again so that we would be justified and so that we would know that what he said was actually true. What he promised was actually true. That the life he promised we have and that, come on, he's coming again. Somebody say amen. I think we need to give God a great hand clap of praise today. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, listen, we're in region uh, 910. We're here at Rubicon. Changing it up. I, I told uh, the staff, listen, why, why don't we preach somewhere else? Let me go to a different region. And no one wanted me. Only, uh, only region 910. Only the RPs here. Ian said, come. We want you. No one else. Want I said, okay, I'll come where I'm wanted. And so this is, this is where we are. Uh, we're kicking off a new series this morning called All In. Everybody say All In. And it uh, looks like we're all in here. I think you're running out of room. We're going to have to open up these partitions next week, I think. Uh, my goodness. All right. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, I want to break this down. We've been just going through a bunch of series this year, unpacking a bit about uh, who we are, you know, really as a church, what God has called us to. We stated our vision is this, that uh, we want to connect with God's purpose and change our world. And so we've been getting, talking about what that means and what that is. The last few weeks we've been talking about community and how we're actually better together. Uh, I hope you've put that into practice these last few weeks and been intentionally connecting, intentionally uh, building relationship with other people in the church because this isn't just an event. This is a group of people. This is a community. A life-giving community, and so it's so important that we make those connections, we receive from those connections. Uh, I forced myself into a couple of invites the last few weeks. I said, look, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. Uh, this is what we're doing. Uh, and, and today, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about this idea about going all in with God. Uh, I want to show you two scriptures and then jump into this. Matt, Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to verse 30 says, one of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate, and he realized Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? This is a very critical question. And so he looks at Jesus, he goes, wow, this, this guy's got wisdom, God is with him. Jesus, I want to know what you say about this. What is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And then listen to what it says. And you must love the Lord your God with all, everyone say all, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Incredible. He doesn't say it's it, not, do not murder, not, do not steal, not all these other things. What is the greatest commandment? That we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Why? Because he is the one and only God. Because if he is who he says he is and he's above everything, then he's worth all of me. Are you with me today? Jesus says actually the, the greatest commandment is that you and I go all in with Jesus. Not, not part way, not a little bit reserved, but that he would have all of my heart. Uh, one more scripture here, Luke chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 11. And this is the story of Jesus calling his disciples. Let me read it quickly for us uh, today. And I'm just going to take a drink of water so I sound better while I read it. One day. No, I'm just kidding. It says, uh, one day... As Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. And he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, he asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. And so he sat in the boat and he taught the crowds from there. 
When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and we didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. So here's these professional fishermen. They go, Jesus, that's cute. You're a nice uh, religious teacher, but we're professional fishermen. They're not biting. They're not here. God bless you. And, the, the, you know, we tried this all night long. Uh, nothing's happening, but, but just to make you happy, we'll throw the nets in again. You know, have you ever done something just to make somebody happy? Okay, okay. It's not going to work, but I'll try it one more time. I'll, I'll show you that it can't really be done. And so they throw the nets in, and now they're full of fish. The nets are breaking, and, and so the Bible says, a shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, so now there's two boats. Both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. And when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, oh Lord, please leave me, I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they, were caught, they had caught. He knew this wasn't ordinary, this was supernatural, this was not normal, and, and he said, uh, as were the others with him, and his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they were also amazed. And Jesus replied, this is what I want you to catch, don't be afraid, from now on, you'll be fishing for people. <laughs> you'll be influencing, catching, bringing in people into my kingdom, something's going to shift in your life. And as soon as they landed, so catch this, fishermen, this is their profession, they're out all night long, trying everything they can, if they don't uh, catch fish they don't eat if they don't catch fish they have no income and they've got nothing they throw the nets in unbelieving they th don't think anything's going to happen both nets are are not only full they're tearing that's not a great thing for a fisherman your net's breaking both boats about to sink this is so much fish and the bible says as soon as they landed they left everything and they followed jesus they left everything and they followed Jesus. They went all in with Jesus. Today, I want to talk to you about going all in. And, and specifically, if you're writing notes, I want you to write this at the top. All or nothing. All or nothing. They left everything and they followed Jesus. I was so caught by that. Wow, they just, they just dropped the fish, dropped the boats, the nets, their livelihood, their partnership. This was a, a business, two boats. They've got partners in business, not just one guy with a fishing rod. This is organized. And they walked away and they said, Jesus, everything is about you. I'm following you. I don't know where you're going, but I'm following you. I, I don't know what this means for my life, but I'm following you. I'm not certain about the future and, and what next month is going to look like or next year, but Jesus, I am following you. This doesn't matter. You matter. I'm going all in with Jesus. They, they, went, they went all the way with him. Some things in life are meant to be all or nothing. There, there's some things you can't experience halfway. Uh, you know, and I've watched this for years. We were youth pastors for like 15 years, and, and I've played a lot of games. I've done a lot of games, and I learned the secret to games in youth ministry is that every game is fun if you go all the way in, and no game is fun if you don't go all the way in. It, you would learn a lot about life if you would think about that. You, you, you show up at Connect Group, I promise you, if you go all the way in, you're going to have a great time at your Connect Group. You sit on the sidelines, I don't know about this connect group. I'm not sure. These people, they look funny. They smell weird. This house is, uh, and you, you know what? You're not going to have a good time. You, you could be at the worst restaurant with your best friends and have a great time. You could be at the best restaurant with people you don't really like and have a terrible time. And it's not, you realize it's not really about the environment. A lot of times it's about my attitude and my perspective and how I'm willing to engage. Some things are just like that. I remember... Uh, years ago, uh, I don't know how long this is, maybe two years ago, might just be one year ago, I don't know, we were in Tokyo, and it happened to overlap uh, one, of our, uh, one of our recce trips also to Japan, and so Chris and Gladys were in Tokyo, and so we all had the day off, we'd been working like all that week, and said, okay, let's go to Tokyo Disneyland, I didn't want to go, but Gladys was like, you got to go, I was like, fine, great, okay, <laughs> let's go, and so we went, and, and we all went, this is us, just leave it there, and, uh, and we went, and we had a good time, we took a photo, but Chris had a bad attitude. Chris had a bad attitude. 
I said, Chris, you got to get some mouse ears. He said, no, I'm not wearing mouse ears. That's so ridiculous. I said, Chris, you can't experience it if you don't go all the way in. No, 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 that's for little kids. And if you notice, all three of us have ears on our head, but there was one. There was one doubting disciple who wasn't willing to give his heart. And, and so you could see that, you know, he's having an okay time, but look at that smile. It's not, it's not even a real smile. It's like, kind of... Like, what is, what is that? It looks like he's dying on the inside. And, we, and so we talked to him, tried to convince him. He just put this up with this off. But, but can I tell you, after a few hours at Disneyland, he caved. And this is how he ended up that day. This is how he ended up. This is how he ended up. It's so special since we're live in 910. And I want you to notice something. Go back to the previous picture. Go back to the previous picture. Look at the difference. Look at the, okay, this smile. Okay, next picture. Wow. Not only that, not only that, this, it healed their marriage. Look at them. Look at them. Look at the previous photo. Look at the previous photo. They look like they're having a fight. He would barely put his arm around his wife, but, but then suddenly he was healed. Okay, last photo. Come on, show it. One more. Look at that. Look, and even, even Gladys is more in love with him when he has mouse ears on. Everyone say all or nothing. You know, you know you're sitting in a church that, that is a church. If you're not familiar with VFC, we're an all-in kind of church. Yeah. Today we prayed for people going to Japan just for short term, but we regularly send church planners all over the world uh, that, that go out for a year of their life and, uh, and begin to tell people about Jesus and start churches and come back, stop schools, stop their jobs, give up things. There's so many people right here and in every location that have done that. Uh, I was part of a church planning team when I was 16. I went to Uganda uh, again. Later, we went to Malaysia. Uh, now we're dealing with this, and so many people have done that. Pastor Joseph that was up here this morning uh, has been to so many countries. He was in Fiji. Uh, where else were you? You were in India. Uh, you know, you could go on and on and just kind of poke around the amount of people. Having a... Sorry, we have a little problem. Hello. All right, I'm back. Uh, and, and, and I want you to know you're sitting amongst a group of people that are used to going all in for Jesus. Are you with me? All in for Jesus. And, and that means when we go all in, we do it in our giving. We do it in our serving. Come on, are you here? We do it with our passion for God in our worship. This isn't just something we attend. This is something we really believe because Jesus died and he rose again. We, you know why we go all in? We go all in because Jesus pulled us all the way into his heart, all the way into his family, all the way into his kingdom. 1 Peter 2.9 says, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He called you out of something and pulled you into something. He called me out of darkness, and he brought me into his kingdom. Jesus called me all the way in. I would, the Bible says I was lost. Are, are you hearing me today? Yeah. Come on. I, I was alone. I was abandoned. I was in darkness, but Jesus called me in. Yeah. And so when I go all the way in, it's not because someone's pressuring me or there's some kind of expectation. It's because, man, I realize what Jesus has done. I realize what he called me to. I want you to think about that call. The Bible said Jesus called the disciples. Listen, you're going to come with me. You're going to be fishers of men. They left everything and they began to follow Jesus. What is, what is that call? Well, he calls us, first of all, to new life, the Bible says, to new life. Maybe you're here for the first time today. Maybe you've never uh, been to church or you've, you've been, but you've never really asked Jesus to come into your heart. What is the call that Jesus is giving? Listen. It is not a call to just religion. It is not a call to just attend a service. It's not a call just to good works. No, no. What Jesus calls us to is to new life in him. Jesus said in John 3, 3, Verily I say to you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Something new happens inside of us, and we become brand new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the Bible says he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. 
How many of you this morning would say, you know what, in my life, old things have passed away. I've seen God move, and he's taken some old things away and brought new things in. Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise if that's you? The old has passed away, and the new has come. What's he talking about? It's, it's talking about a radical change. Why would the disciples drop everything? Why would I go all in for Jesus? Because it's such a brand new life. It, it's radical. The old things are gone, and the new things have come into our heart. In other words, I'm not trying to act new. Jesus makes me new. I'm not trying to be someone that I'm not. Jesus is making me into a new person. He puts new desires and priorities and values and standards inside my heart. Something I've never had before, something I've never experienced before. And that's exactly what happened to the early disciples. That's why, you know, as you study history and you go, some people are, are skeptical. They go, I don't know, is, is this really real? Did this really happen? No, I want you to think about this. Undeniably, historical fact, the early disciples had such an, a radical experience with Jesus that they were willing to die for him. People go, well, they made it up. No, 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 you don't, you don't die for something like that. They gave up everything. They were martyred. They were persecuted. They were punished. They, they were put in, in jail and on trial. They were willing to give up everything. They go, we're, th this is a brand new life. I've never had anything like this. I'm not going back. I'm not backing down. I'm not going back to what it was. I have found a new life in Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen. Not only a new life, but that call that Jesus gives is that he calls us to a new kingdom. He calls us to a brand new kingdom. You know, uh, there's not many kingdoms left on, on earth, but when the Bible talks about the world kingdom, it's talking about rulership. It's talking about influence, authority. If you were in a kingdom, there would be a king, and the king represents the ruler, represents kind of the the uh, culture of the day, the king would set the tone. What kind of kingdom is that? What is the expectation? How are we to respond? What are the responsibilities there? And the Bible says when, when Jesus comes and calls us, he actually calls us into his kingdom. Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness among the people. So what did Jesus preach? Jesus preached that, you know what? God was coming. God's kingdom was here, and you and I could be a part of it. Jesus preached that we aren't just subject to the whims and desires of culture and people around us, but we could belong to God's kingdom, be under his authority, have his rulership over our life, and, and that security and peace that comes from a king that is looking out for you. That's what, that's what Jesus taught. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That kingdom idea, it represents purpose in our life. And he calls us to enter into his kingdom by faith. It is a new framework. It is a new value system. It is different from what the world has. Why do I go all in? Because he calls me to new life. He calls me to that new kingdom. Not only that, but he calls me to new fulfillment. He calls me to new fulfillment. You could, you could fill the, the world with the amount of writing and, and talk and discussion and podcasts and whatever. People trying to figure out how to find real fulfillment in life. But can I tell you, fulfillment comes when you begin to give your heart to Jesus and align your life with the purpose that God has always had for you. We were created to know him. We were created to be in relationship with him. We were created to serve him. And when I put my faith in Jesus, what I was really created for comes alive inside of me. And I find fulfillment. Jesus said it this way. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Why did Jesus come? That you could experience life. That you could experience fulfillment. The very purpose for which God destined us for, we could experience it through Jesus. And that, that is why they respond like this. That is why they, they begin to react like this, because you know what? Jesus called the disciples into that kind of life, and he's calling us today to experience this as well. Somebody shout amen. amen. You, you won't find this in the, in the world outside. 
You won't find this being kind of half in and half out. You find this when your heart belongs to him. You find this fulfillment when you understand the source of my fulfillment is not in my pursuits, is not in my talents, it is not in my giftings, it is not how I measure up to other people or the standards of this world, it is not how, how, how my finances look compared to somebody else. The source of my fulfillment is in Him. Because in Him, I find everything that I need. In Him, I find forgiveness. In Him, I find acceptance no matter who I am. In him, I find a provider that can provide for everything that I need. In him, I find purpose and destiny and calling. And when Jesus calls us into that new life, to that new kingdom, to that fulfillment, listen, we need to respond. He's calling for a response. And so when he calls the disciples, they recognize this. And and that's why it says in verse 11, as soon as they landed, they left everything. And they followed Jesus. They left everything and they followed Jesus. I, I was so caught by that. I want you to think about that. They, they walked. What did they walk away from? Yes, the fish and stuff. But I want you to think about what that represented in their life because it's the same call Jesus calls us to today. It's the same thing that we can experience today. It's the same thing we walk away from and that we leave behind when we turn and we go all in for Jesus. You know what they, what they left behind? They left behind their past. Not the, the fish, the boats, all that stuff. It represented their past life. Peter looked at Jesus and he said, Jesus, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. I've got a past. Jesus, I'm thinking about all the things I've done and who I've been. I, I haven't been this way. I'm not holy. Jesus, I'm not a religious person. Look, it's all my past. I've never done this. I don't go to church. I don't do these things. I don't act like that. I don't think like this. But they left everything and they followed Jesus. They left behind their past. And you know what? When Jesus calls us into new life, I've got good news for you. Exactly what the Bible says is exactly what can happen in your life today. And in my life, that when I put my faith in him, the old can, can go away and the new can come in. That I can actually leave my past behind. The history that I have, the, the, the struggles that I have, even the trauma that I carry, I can walk away from that and step into Jesus. I can step into faith in him. And that decision to go in, man, you know what? There's part of me I'm leaving behind. I'm not going back to that. I'm not going to look like that anymore. I'm not going to live like that anymore. I'm not going to run after those things anymore. They left their past behind. The second thing that they left was this. They left their perspectives behind. They had a lot of perspective. Already they're arguing. Jesus, we fished. We tried. It didn't work. It's not going to. They have all these opinions, and at the end they just go, oh, we're following you. All these excuses, all these reasons, but they come to this idea that, you know what? Your perspective. I mean, we're in a, we live in a very intellectual culture and society. It would be weird if you didn't have a perspective, didn't have an opinion. But when I come to God, you know what? I actually begin to leave behind old perspectives, and I value God's perspective higher than my own. Sometimes the way I think and the way I view things and the way I live and the way culture tells me to live, it's not actually the right thing. And I begin to look at the Bible. I begin to look at God's word. I begin to look at this and say, you know what? My, my perspective is going to be different now because my perspective is framed by God's purpose. It's framed by what Jesus is calling me to. And so they leave behind those perspectives. They leave behind the things they used to pursue and what they used to run after. They, they walk away from that. And I think we could go round and round every location today and talk to just countless people that would go, I used to be like that. I used to think like that. I used to go for, for this and I used to do that. I, Gr- Brother Graydon's told me all the stories, how he used to be. It was pretty bad. All right. And he, he, had, he said in business, I was like this. I used to do that. But then he got saved and God changed his perspective, right? Changed the way he did it. And he's talked to me so many times about the testimony he began to have in his company, in his business. Different perspective, different mindset. Come on, are, are you with me? I, I remember getting jobs. I think I shared this a while ago, but getting jobs, and I would, I would apply for the job, but I'd have to tell the person, listen, I'm not working on Sunday. They go, well, no, you have to. I said, no, I'm just not. You have to. No, I'm not. So if you want me, then I'm, you're never going to see me on a Sunday. Well, but it's shift work. You have to come in. I'm just not going to do that. 
So do you want me or not? Yes, we want. I don't know why they, I don't know why they wanted to hire me. They just looked at me. They liked me. But I just had a different perspective. No, church, that's, that's, that's Sunday. And by the way, Wednesday, no, because I've got this cell group. And, you know, I can't do this day. And that one, well, you can't do this, can't do that. No, I can't. But I promise you, like, I'll work really hard. And this is going to be good. And it's going to work out. I just have a different perspective. I just, that's, that's not really what I'm after. That's not what I'm searching for. It's not what I'm living for right now. You know what they left behind? I want you to think about this. What does it mean to go all or nothing with Jesus? It means I, I leave my past behind. There's some of us today, li- listen to me right now, some, some of you today, you need to give your past to Jesus. You need to let God come and forgive you. You need to let God come draw a line in your life and say, you know what? Before today was the old me, and after today is the new me. Next week, we're going to be baptizing people in church and celebrating that new life. It is a celebration of new life. Today, you can do that when you put your faith in Jesus. I need to come, and when I go all in, I say, you know what? Even my perspectives, my opinions, I, I submit that to God. I, I, I leave my unbelief behind when I go all in for Jesus. They came at first. Jesus is preaching, teaching the crowds. They're not even interested. They're not even sure what's going on. They, it, they're out just fishing and cleaning their nets and doing this stuff, and he kind of gets it. Hey, come in the boat. Let's push out a little. Put the net. It's not going to work. Everything else, and they are, they are so amazed. They go, we believe in you. We, we believe in you. In fact, if you study the Bible, you'll find that Jesus has actually called these disciples before. This is probably the second or third time Jesus called them. So they knew him, but they hadn't left everything to follow him. They liked him. They liked what this was, but they left. This moment was a moment they left unbelief behind. Some of you have come in. You go, well, I'll check it out. I heard there's free food. Let me see. You know, there's some coffee and something. Great. Hey, if anything else, come for the food. That's fine. But I'm not sure. I don't know if I believe. You know what? I want to challenge you. Why don't you leave unbelief behind and put your faith and trust in Jesus? God's not after anything else. God's not trying to manipulate you. God doesn't need your good works. God doesn't need your money. You can't impress him. All he's asking for is your faith. All he's asking for is your faith. And, when, and they come and they say, you know what? We're leaving unbelief behind. We're going to be believers. We're going to be believers. Didn't all of us start out the same way, by faith and by believing in Jesus. You know, some of you, maybe you've known Jesus for a long time, and there can be seasons in your life where it's hard to keep believing in him. You can start to trust in your own abilities. You can start to get fearful because of your job situation, get overwhelmed by medical problems, financial conditions. I, I want to I remind you today that when you gave your heart to Jesus and you went all in with him, you actually left unbelief behind and you became a believer. And there are moments that we have to get called back to that faith, back to that belief and say, I'm coming back to believe again. God, your promise, your word, and your purpose for my life. Somebody say amen. Amen. Here's the last one. Let the band come. Is not only did they leave their unbelief behind, but they left uh, their priorities behind. They left their priorities behind. Uh, You you know, the the Bible says he was there, and they were uh, washing their nets. Jesus was teaching. And so they're around. They knew Jesus. But what was interesting was Jesus was something to them. He wasn't everything to them. Until this moment, he was still something. And so I want you to think about this. Not that they, they don't have anything to do with this. Oh, he's good. Or he's nice. Or yeah, I kind of believe. Yeah, I go to church. I, I, I'm around. Yeah. But they left everything this day and they followed him. They gave everything in their heart and they followed him. And, and they left their old priorities. Their, their, the old thing they were running after. The old thing that really mattered to them. The old thing that lined up their schedule and everything else. They go, you know what? I think this is now, this is my priority. Jesus, you're my priority. Jesus, your kingdom, your way. God, you, you determine my schedule. You determine the course of my life. What, what does it mean when people say, I, I want to go to Japan for a year. I want to go to the mission field for a year. I, God, you, you set the priority for me. What does it mean when I, I pray and say, God, do you want me to serve this year? Do you want to use me? I know it's a commitment. I know it's time. No, but God, you, you set my priority. You tell me what's important. God, you speak to me. You lead me. You guide me. He was something, but not everything. But that day, he became everything to them. He became everything. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. When you and I go all in with Jesus, 
something miraculous happens in our heart. Maybe you need a miracle today. I want to remind you, it doesn't come through just wishful thinking. It doesn't come through trying to earn it and get God's attention. It comes very simply by God owning all of our heart. And when God has my attention and God has my heart, my life is open to his kingdom purpose and his power in me. He's calling us today into new life with him. And I want you to think about this as we end because every one of us have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice, and I want, you to, I want you to think about this. What is the choice? Well, Jesus is actually offering us something better today. He's offering you something better. If you've never put your faith in him, I want you to tell you, Jesus is here offering you new life. Jesus is here offering you a place in his family, in his kingdom. Jesus is offering real fulfillment. I give the old, I give the frustration, I give the sin, I give the brokenness, I give all of that stuff, and he's offering me something better, new life for my old struggles, new fulfillment for old bondage. I've got a choice today to step into that better life, to step into what Jesus offered. I've got a choice today, even as a believer, to, to say, you know what, Jesus, I stepped in once, I'm not going back. I still choose you. I still choose to believe. Are you with me today? God, I still choose to believe for my healing. I still choose to believe that your way is better. I still choose to believe, God, that you're good in all of your ways. I still choose to give you my entire heart. I'm not going back. God, I'm actually making a choice. I'm coming toward you because you called me once and I said yes. I'm still saying yes today. That we would come all the way in faith in him. Can you say amen? This morning, I want us to respond to him. I want us to respond to God. And so right where you are, I want you to stand to your feet for a moment today. I think we're all at different places in this journey. But I want to, I want to talk to you for a moment, especially if you're a, a Christian already, you're a believer in Jesus. I don't think this moment should pass us by without us saying, God, you know what? It started in faith. It started in giving you everything today. When we remember this day you died, you rose again. Let this be a day I say, God, you still have everything in my heart. You still got everything. I'm, I'm, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after that new life and that kingdom. God, I'm coming after that fulfillment. I'm giving you my heart today. And so I want us to worship for a moment. And in this atmosphere of worship, right where you are, would you just surrender your heart to God? No one can do that for you. No one can know what's on the inside. And maybe there's been a struggle. Maybe there's been situations that have kind of tried your faith or worn down your surrender but this moment this day this is a, an opportunity to choose fresh surrender it's an opportunity to give god all my heart all my mind come on all my strength everything that i have in this moment and so right where you are would you close your eyes if you're able to just focus on god and we're going to worship right now joel's going to lead us i want you to lift your hands and give your heart to him today